Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Yun ni na turang bale, namarang bale. Turang ke namarang mga darubo nung nalewa kay Kim Nirungane. Your coalition government has just completed 100 days in office. It is only right to report on our performance in this critical first period of governance. How do we rate in meeting our targets or our promises? What other achievements can we put on our scoreboard? Before I answer, I wish to make an announcement and pay a special tribute. You, the people of Fiji, have played a very real part in this initial push by the coalition government to set Fiji on a course for a great revival. I say that because you have gladly joined with us to give our country fresh confidence and hope for our future. Together, we are breaking down the walls that have separated us, separated our communities in the past. From this will emerge a new spirit and energy to make our nationhood complete. Your eager acceptance of the freedom that came with the appointment of the coalition government is another milestone. It will be a strong pillar of our democracy. So I thank you for your achievement in these first 100 days. You helped to inspire us. You let us know that we could rely on your support for the momentous project of national renewal. I'm not going to present you with an overly optimistic picture we are doing well in many ways, but we need to be grounded in reality. Your government is acutely aware that before the creation of the new Fiji, we must first deal with the big challenges and problems such as managing the national debt, restoring basic services, and repairing damaged infrastructure. This will cause some financial pain but when it is over, we can then move forward with confidence. I should mention that all the data and materials covering our record of the first 100 days are still being collated. We'll be publishing more details very soon. Following our appointment to government on December the 24th, we quickly began decision-making through the Cabinet of Ministers. Cabinet met five times until March the 28th, just before the 100-day mark was up. At least in our last count, we had conceded 117 submissions, 117 cabinet papers. Each one of those had to do with some way of improving the nation, improving our lives, especially in helping you the people who put us here. It's important for me to explain that the coalition, the People's Alliance, the National Federation Party, and Sodalpa work as a united whole. I see its accomplishments as a joint effort, a combination of following up on our promises, acting on declarations and targets for the election campaign and initiatives arising from the daily business of governance. I'll now give you a brief overview with comments. Starting from the parliament itself, we've made changes to improve the way it functions. We have approved the use of our vernacular languages in the House to more fully reflect the multiracial nature of our country, Fiji. We strongly believed the country would be better served by a parliament employing a joint approach by government and opposition on crucial national issues. The previous administration always rejected any suggestion for cooperation. I was pleased, therefore, when the new leader of the opposition, the Honorable Inia Seriratu, 
responded favorably to overtures from me for members of both sides of the House to work together in the interests of the nation and its people when circumstances demand. I count this as an achievement. The new relationship between government and the opposition will have positive significance, not only in Parliament, but also in the country at large. It will be one more step towards achieving a more favorable and productive political climate. Obviously, the opposition will continue to play its democratic role of keeping a check on government. There will be many clashes and arguments, but this should not deter us from joining forces when necessary. In January, your government acted quickly to put together a $50 million back-to-school support package to help parents and guardians buy school items for their children. Assistance went to more than 220,000 students who shared a total payout of $44.4 million. As pledged, we maintain social pensions and other forms of support and benefits for the poor and the needy, including bus fare subsidies, care and protection of children and single parents. At March the 5th, there were 96,000 recipients under social protection programs. Resolving the ongoing dispute between the University of the South Pacific and the former Fiji government was central to our agenda. The penalties and persecution directed to the USP by the government were a major concern. We were particularly focused on the welfare of many thousands of Fijian students and those from neighboring countries whose education was under threat. We therefore made urgent arrangements to pay $10 million to support the USP's operations for the remainder of the financial year. More payments will be made to meet our total arrears. We also lifted the immigration ban on USP Vice Chancellor Professor Paul Alualia so that he could resume his duties at the Lothal Bay campus. The coalition made a commitment to write off debts related to tertiary loan scheme and the national topper scheme. A working committee is looking into the legislation to make provisions on forgiving of TELS and TELS debts. The coalition government is undeterred in its promise to forgive TELS debt on the basis that students will do service to the country through bonding provisions. The study loan agreement will be covered into bonding agreements in the next budget. We campaigned hard against the oppressive Media Industry Development Act, MIDA, which curtailed media freedom and promised we would scrap it. A bill is before Parliament right now to achieve this. We have taken action as well to repeal the controversial Itoke Land Trust Amendment Bill, known as Bill Number 17. This was enacted with undue haste, without consultation with the landowners. At least 12 other pieces of legislation impacting the Itoke will be reviewed in the 2022-2023 Parliament session. This is in line with our commitment to review and repeal Itoke-related laws that marginalize their rights. A shadow was cast over Fiji's history when the Great Council of Chiefs was closed down. For the indigenous people, the GCC is a symbol of their identity and their culture. They regard it as the tra traditional apex of the Vanua. We therefore decided that it must be restored. Its new life begins on May the 24th and 25th of this, of this year on the chiefly island of Mbau, which also occupies a renowned place in the annals of Fiji's history. The outcome document of the inaugural Aitauke Resource Owners Forum is ready to be submitted to the National Economic Summit and to Cabinet. 
Cabinet has endorsed Fiji's support for the United Nations Declaration on the Rights of Indigenous Peoples. Many women were angered and confused when they were required to revert to their birth certificate names to register as voters. Legal action was taken by some group, uh, but meanwhile, government is engaged on changing this law so that women can use the name of their preference. One of my first duties in office was to fulfill a promise to allow Dr. Parma Lau, the widow of our famed historian and academic, the late Professor Bridge Lau, to return to Fiji. She had been prevented by the last government from bringing home the ashes of her late husband for his last rites at his birthplace in Tambia, near Lombasa. With her family and the nation, she finally got to say the last farewell to Professor Bridge Lau. You all know Fiji is weighed down with a record level of debts. Our coalition's aim is to manage this prudently while preserving the ability to meet our commitments to you and to Fiji. Those commitments are to give you the services and amenities to which you are entitled to create the conditions for poverty to be defeated and for wages to rise and businesses to flourish. It is private businesses and business owners and investors who will produce the new jobs that we so much need. Our appointment of a fiscal review committee of highly qualified Fijians was in line with our thinking on consultation and tapping into local expertise. We will draw on their skills and knowledge, their knowledge of committee members, the knowledge of the committee members to add to our thoughts and ideas of solving the financial difficulties that confront us today. The committee will take account of the views of as many as possible. We want to know what they, they now think, even if they are not financially or financial experts. Many have written, they've written in with their ideas. Others have joined in public consultations. We must brace and prepare ourselves for the findings of the committee by the first week in May. The country may not receive good news, but that should not diminish our belief in what Fiji can become. A national economic summit is another government priority, reflecting awareness that special initiatives are needed to get a grip on the economic and social hazards that are before us. Plans for this exercise in community democracy are well advanced now. 500 delegates from across the a cross-section of society will take part in the summit from the April 20th to 21st in Suba. They will join with the government in debating and making recommendations on sundry issues affecting society and the economy. From that will come the basis for a national vision to guide the nation forward. The ideas and proposals adopted will assist in putting together the coalition's first budget. We devoted time and energy to follow up on our frequently expressed concerns about the need to encourage businesses, large and small, to either expand their existing enterprises or go into new, new ventures. Since December, approximately 480 small and medium enterprises have qualified for financial support. Your government has made a start on further improving the business climate by removing or simplifying regulations that often acted as an obstacle to investment. I'm pleased to report that business confidence is high and expressions of interest are coming in locally and from overseas for significant new investments, especially in tourism. With these investments will come jobs. 
After government intervention, Fiji Airways is prepared to reinstate 212 employees laid off at the time of the pandemic crisis. The airline is playing a key role in the revival of tourism, and at last count had flown in 304,688 visitors from December of last year to March of this year. It recently started a new and potentially lucrative service to Hong Kong. The contentious no jab, no job policy led to some workers losing their jobs. Some unvaccinated citizens were not able to worship with their loved ones. We revoked the policy. The civil service retirement age was increased to 60, and arrangements are being implemented to change contract appointments into permanent positions. A new public service commission has been appointed. Preparations are in hand to re-establish the Higher Salaries Commission to determine and regulate salaries of permanent secretaries and chief executive officers of public enterprises. A scheme is in place for engaging experts to help improve many aspects of the service. We're in the process of changing membership of government and statutory boards with initial focus on the Fiji Broadcasting Corporation, the FBC. Our aim is to ensure greater transparency and accountability. Consistent with your aims, our aims, our collective aims, plans have been taking shape since the start of the year for creating new developments and incomes in agriculture. Similarly, we are moving to revitalize the sugar industry that had come very close to collapse. The main initiative at the moment is to finish preparations of a draft strategic plan to increase production and efficiency. It should be ready by the end of this month. Consultations with farmers were held in Vitilevu and Vanuelevu to listen to concerns and find out solutions. We have announced a price for sugar cane this year of $85 per ton. Depending on production, this could lead to approximately $130 million being shared among 10,672 farmers. Initial discussions are taking place about establishing an ethanol plant. Throughout the election campaign, the removal of voting rights from citizens of towns and cities was a constant theme. We committed to bringing democracy back to the municipalities. I can report that preparations are now underway for local elections, particularly on the legal aspects of it. We will provide an update as soon as possible, and we will be releasing that date very soon. Cabinet has approved a public-private partnership affordable housing project on six sites in the western and central divisions. There are schemes for upgrading squatters or informal settlements to a number of uh, affordable housing schemes around the country. Your government, as promised, made a historic decision to inaugurate a new public holiday commemorating the arrival into Fiji in 1879 of the Girmatiyas from India, whose descendants have become an integral part of our nation. The first Girmat Day is on May the 15th, preceded by an international Girmit conference. Ever since the last government crept the holiday honoring the great chief Ratu Sir Kuna, it's been our mission to reinstate that national celebration. We have done that. May the 29th will mark the revival of this major annual occasion on the national calendar. At a time when Fiji moves forward, Big power rivalry is affecting the region. The need for greater unity amongst island countries is crucial. This was evident during the election campaign. It came in very much clear to us 
when I became Prime Minister and Minister for Foreign Affairs, and when I took over as chair of the Pacific Islands Forum, I made a specific visit to the Kiribati, which had relinquished its membership of the Pacific Islands Forum. I had a very successful discussion with the President, His Excellency Tenesi Mamau, and Kiribati, or Kiribati decided to return to the Pacific Islands Forum. The overriding principle is that a united Pacific Islands Forum is better placed to protect the interests of the members and the region than a forum divided. Unity was further enhanced at a virtual meeting with the Micronesian leaders and a meeting of the Pacific Islands leaders in, uh, in 90, later that month. It is also crucial and critical that we continue to engage with our bilateral and multilateral partners in our commitment to ensure a sustainable, resilient future for all Fijians and the people of the region. Your coalition government has engaged with a number of our diplomatic partners since our appointment. It is clear that they, as well as you, have confidence in us to lead and to achieve the goals that we have set out for ourselves and for you. Fellow Fijians, I share with you just some of the coalition's achievements since December 24th. As mentioned, further data is still being assembled. I leave you with the same thoughts with which I began. We are faced with some real challenges, especially financially, and there may be hard times ahead. But I am confident that driven by our common desire for happiness and prosperity, we can transform Fiji. I'm proud and glad that we are on this journey together. God bless you all. God bless Fiji.